Hey guys, it's Susie Lolly. If I've never met you before, well, I've probably never met most of you before, but if I've never met you in one of my videos before, I'm so glad to have you. We're continuing the Crash Course series of Canvas. So while I'm not going to touch every button that Canvas can have, if you are wanting a step-by-step, -step, just look at the date order in which I uploaded these videos. I think I'm going to say that same thing in the next clip. But anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about assignments. Specifically, how can you give and receive work from your students? And then the next video, we'll talk about how you can grade it. So stay tuned. So before we go any further, I've gotten several questions about, Susie, what order do we watch your videos in? Well, I mean, I'm putting them in a semi-logical order by when I upload them. So if you want to go by date and just view them that way. But I do want to recommend two related resources to this video. I will refer to them again. But you want to make sure that in Canvas, you always simplify the sidebar. There are too, 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 too many options for you and for your students. If you're not using them, turn them off. And so go back and find, these are not clickable, but go back and find the video called Simplifying the Sidebar. Even though it says Canvas for Littles, it applies really for everybody. And then also organizing with modules. I'm going to show you how to build an assignment in this course, but I'm not going to dive uh, too deep into how you organize. But that video will be really helpful for you. Again, if it says Littles, that's okay. It's just really simplifying for even the youngest learners is what that series is about. So go watch those two, you know, after this, before this, but make sure you come on back. We're going to talk about assignments today. So typically in a course, I would always tell you, begin with the modules to create whatever you're going to create. But I want to focus today on just assignments and how you can start those. So just imagine that I'm at a, I am at modules, but just know that that's the way I usually start them. But the other way you can start an assignment is just by going to the word assignments over on the left-hand side. You can click plus assignment. And I want you to think of assignment as something where I need you to do something. I need a category or a column in my grade book. If I'm just wanting an event or I just want a notification, there are other ways to do that in Canvas. But an assignment is something where you actually want your kids to get something and send something back, or you just want a spot in your grade book. And I'm going to talk about the two options for that. We're going to ignore mastery paths for now, but I will hopefully I have a video on that coming out soon. And so anyway, we're just going to put an assignment in here. I'm really creative and I call it assignment one or assignment 32 just to make sure I don't use anything else. You're going to notice if you've been watching any of my other videos that you've seen this rich text editor before. You have, you know, font sizes and these are all very similar to Word. And then over to the right, the three dots. I have not demonstrated this in a video that I've recorded so far, I don't think. But anyway, just know that there are other hidden options there, including if you want to link to external links or course links, which is a different way than this has been set up in the free course. If you wanted to link to something within Canvas, you could use that. And maybe I can demonstrate that in a minute. And then um, you've got the image button. You've got media. I talked about, and this was not on my resources page, but I have a, in my Canvas for Little series, an accessibility, uh, an accessibility video that just talks about how you could create, you know, media directions for your students to make it easier for them to navigate. And then different documents, you get the point. There's a lot of options here. Just don't ignore this three dots when you're setting up. So I'm going to click that again, make it go away. So I'm just going to say, this is my assignment. And I typically found that in Canvas, it was a 14 point font was better, but you play, you be you. <laughs> 14 point, uh, point font typically match the heading for as well. So if you just wanted another little shortcut for it. And so this is my assignment. These are my directions. Okay, I can write whatever directions there. Again, I can link to something. So I said I would demonstrate that. So let me do that. I'm going to click here. I'm going to do a course link. It's going to bring up everything I've created in this course. But you know what? Actually, that was a bad idea because I haven't created anything in this course. It's called Pretend Course. There's nothing to link to um, except maybe this module. Let me do that. Yep, there's a module. I can link to that. Remember, if you have a blank, you have a link in Canvas. So if you needed to link to something else in your directions, I want to give this caveat that I feel like kids are very prone to not read directions to begin with. So if you're going to have multi-step directions, I would bullet or number them in some way. Also, I think linking out to something else should be done with caution because, again, they're going to click that, go somewhere else, get lost. And so I prefer that you just, you know, have everything they need to know right here within this um, rich text editor. You can even embed here if you need to. There's your little HTML editor that has moved in the newer version. So if you needed to embed something that they could see right here in order to be able to complete, for example, a YouTube video, um, you could embed that here. They could watch the video here without leaving Canvas and then do your assignment. So prepare some good directions. You know how to do that. And then however many points you want it to be. I'm an old school girl. I'm into 100 points. 
Assignment groups are set up separately, but basically that's going to be your grade book. I'm not planning on creating a video for the grade book. You'll have to use the Canvas community or whatever uh, your school's guidance says because those can be so touchy and I don't want to give false uh, information. But whatever categories and whatever setup your district or, or school wants you to use, then that would be your assignment groups. How do you want to display the grade? There are a lot of different options here. I have at times done a complete incomplete uh, maybe for that beginning of the year paperwork that comes in that I just want to be able to show, you know, that kids have turned it in or not. And they can get their locker. That gives me a good tracking system. If that were the case, I would have made this a zero point assignment. Just it's in my grade book. I want a spot for it, but it doesn't count against them. So just keep that in mind. Different ways in which to show the grade. And then you also have an option to say, do not count this assignment toward the final grade. I'm thinking of a pretest. You want them to know what they got, but you don't want them to count, want that to count against them. You could check that box. And then you have different submission types. It tries to remember what you use the most is what I found. Like if, if I keep using online for the for several times, it'll try to remember that and save it for me next time I come in. Um, but just know that no submission just means I need a spot in my grade book for something, but they're not going to be turning into anything in on Canvas. They might be turning it in on paper but they're not turning it in on Canvas, and so that would be the no submission. But what I use most often is called online, and you just select as many options as you want kids to have. Are they gonna need to type in a text box? If you didn't watch my video on, it's again, Canvas for Littles, but it really applies to everybody. A text box can be a really versatile way to get responses back from students. Um, your website URL, think of if you're having your kids do sways or they're making their own YouTube videos or anything where they have a link to it, you could um, have them share back with you. Media recordings, you can have them record directly into Canvas and upload those, or a file upload. That could be anything. It could be something that they created a document on or um, you know, took a picture of or whatever it is that you want them to share. And you can restrict what type of files that you're wanting them to upload. I'm not gonna get into all that. But if you leave all four, it is the most versatile, but it also has the most options. So. If you're teaching kids who you're like, you know, just the facts, ma'am, and you know every one of them is going to be sending you a link, then just remove these other checkboxes. Okay, so I'm going to do that now and pretend. You know what? Actually, I'll leave text entry so you can see that one as well. And then how many attempts do they get? Um, you might be able to limit how many times they're able to upload or if you're a mastery grader, unlimited. We have not messed with groups or peer reviews, so let's leave those alone for now. Um, if you have Infinite Campus or any other grade book, you can turn on whether you want this assignment to copy there or not. And then um, here's your assign button. Now, you can assign to everyone, or if you had specific students in a course, I don't. This is pretend. You could type that kid's name or, or multiple kids' names. You can also assign to a section. So if you're someone who is like me, I used to teach ninth grade and 11th grade lit. I had ninth grade three times a day, 11th grade twice. I could assign to my ninth grade sections or just one of those sections because typically I would have a different course for ninth grade anyway. So let's just say that I have a section that is a um, an honor section. I could create this assignment, just assign it to them and the other kids would not even see it in their grade book. So I can assign to a specific section or I can assign to a particular kid. You'll see some options here for actual students. And then when is it due? Let's make it due tomorrow. And then finally, here's an available from until. You can use the available from, and I have, until I recommend not using it all, and here's why. Available from is for those of you who like to plan ahead. You're not Susie Lolly. <laughs> I do plan ahead sometimes, mm -hmm. but I'm more spontaneous and fun than uh, organized. And anyway, so if you're someone who wants to go ahead and create your assignments but not have them available for students until a certain day, because you don't want that one kid to be like, um, I did all the work last night. Now what am I supposed to do in class besides terrorize you? And so you want to make sure it's available at, um, at a certain date for them to do if that applies. But if you lock it down, if you fill in the until button, then they physically cannot turn in the work. So that means that three rando kids are going to have to give you a piece of paper because they won't be able to turn it in on Canvas. And then if you're like me, you have a crazy desk. And then the kids like have to you know put that there. You have to remember, oh, yeah, these three kids gave it to me on paper. It's just a recipe for disaster. So Canvas will still mark the work late even if you don't lock it down and do this until date. So I just recommend a due date and maybe an available from, I don't work that far ahead, it's up to you. But I would leave the lockdown date completely empty just so that kids still can uh, turn things in even if they're late, it'll just be marked for you. And then finally, you're gonna see where it says notify users that this content has changed, you can give them a notification. 
Now I want to go back to another option and kind of combine it into the same video. It's called a cloud assignment. And um, so remember I told you this is where you mark what kids can submit. You, no submission and on paper are pretty similar. Uh, it doesn't do anything different as Canvas go, as far as Canvas goes, but just lets you have a column in your gradebook where you can type things that they turned in otherwise in other places. Um, then there's online, but I wanted to show you external tool. External tool can look confusing when you first click it, but basically apps that your district or your school has connected to Canvas, you can pull in and have kids submit via that tool, okay? So I'm not going to deep dive into all of them because you might have different options for your school, but I do want you to know about this, this external tool. And remember, anything you want to try, you can try it as a student. So I'll, I'll get back to that and show you in just a minute. But anyway, the one I do want to show you is called a cloud assignment. If you are a district who has used Google or G Suite or Office 365 for your kids before, for them to share documents, for them to type on documents, those are still the best way for them to do word processing and collaboration with each other as far as, um, and then also to be able to get their own copy and send it back to you. But I want to show you how you activate that feature in Canvas. So it's called a cloud assignment. And if you want to find it, it, again, you have to drop down to external tool, click find. And for today's example, I'm going to look for Google Drive cloud assignment, but there's also one called Office 365 cloud assignment. So I am going to go ahead and click Google. And the first time you do that, you will have to authorize it. Now I've already authorized mine in the background. And this is my Google Drive. What I'm about to do is show you that anything you want to pull from your Google Drive and distribute a, a separate copy to every student, they can work on it, send it back to you. That's what you're about to do. I love this because when it comes back to you, you can see it right there in the in SpeedGrader, which is going to be my next video. Hint, hint. So I'm just going to pull a random something. I'm just showing you the concept. You'll want to pull a file. You can open a folder and pull that file, but something, think of like a, most typically like a Google Doc or Google Slides, or if you're using Office 365, a Word document or PowerPoint slides that you would like to send out to kids. They fill them out, they send them back. You can even use it for a template. So let's just say, and then I click select. Let's just say that you wanted to send kids just some directions on a, on a document. Maybe they're writing a, an essay you could send them a blank Word document with just a few directions at the top or a PowerPoint template with just the headings of things you want them to cover because you know kids don't read a rubric. <laughs> you know they don't read directions. So if you can send them even a scaffold and then receive it back, I'll show you what this looks like. Notice that once I did that, it has a link filled in for me. It's going to that particular document. And again, it's going to distribute to every kid and then collect it back when they're done. So I'm done. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click Save and Publish. Let's just say I'm ready for kids to see it. And then I'm going to take you into a student view to actually complete the assignment. I typically would go into my Canvas course and show you student view of something like here's a cloud assignment. And when I go into my home tab, remember that you can try most everything as a student when I say most. I'm about to show you what you can't. But on the home button, you always have a student view. It'll give you a pink box around your um, around your content and let you know you're practicing something as a student. Typically, you can do that. Here's the deal. With a cloud assignment, you cannot test it as a student because it requires a student to authorize his or her Google account, the same as the teacher has to do the first time. And I can't fake authorize a fake person's account. So I just want to walk you through some screenshots from the Canvas community of what it's going to look like for students. So they would obviously go to the assignment and click it, but it's going to look like this. It's going to pull up either their Google, the doc in their Google account, or it's going to pull up the doc in their Office 365 account, whichever you set up. They're going to work on it. They're going to wait for it to save. Typically at the top of a Word document, it'll say saved to allow them to know that's done. Um, and Google will say the same thing. So once it's saved and they're done with whatever they're going to write on it, then they're going to click the submit button. And when they send that back to you, you're getting your template you sent out, but with their writing on it. And you don't have to have them, uh, the, the old fashioned workflow was to have them, um, you know, share a folder, or share a, a document individually with you by email or something. You don't have to do that. I'm sending out my document as a template and they're sending it all back. I think that's amazing. In the next little clip, I'm going to show you some other ways that they can submit assignments as a student view. So again, I showed you in a previous video that I linked on a couple slides ago uh, that modules are the key to organizing everything in Canvas, but I wanted you to see there was an assignments button you could click to create. It's not my preferred way, but you're the boss of you. 
And so if you wanted to go back and add something to a module retroactively, you can. You would just click on your black plus on the module and then you would find that, that assignment, which is what I'm about to do. And now it's part of the module as well and you can drag and drop it. So I'm gonna go back into that same assignment and I wanna show you what it looks like if I, instead of making this a cloud assignment, instead I change the assignment settings, remove that external tool, and instead it's an online submission. I'm just gonna go ahead and check all four boxes and let you see what it looks like for students when you give them one or all of those options. And I'm gonna save again. And remember home is where I can get that student view. <clears throat> And so I'm going to click student view. And now I'm in as a student. It's on my to-do bar over here because I haven't done it yet. I can also click it from here. So I'm going to go into that assignment. And as soon as I click the blue button, so this part is sometimes challenging for students to know that they have to click the blue button before they see how they can submit it. So it says submit. You click it at the beginning and the end. When I click submit, here are the options I gave them. I could let them upload a file that's just so basic they can find it on their desktop, they can find it wherever it is. Text box entry, again, in that assignments for littles, I gave you some specific ideas on how to use that, but they can type in a box. In a box. Um, if they needed to upload a URL to me and then leave any comments about it, so this is my Sway. If you haven't played with Sway, I love it. It's like a digital poster. It's a Microsoft product. Check it out. Um, there's media they can record and upload right in Canvas. I will not practice that here, but I did show that again in my accessibility video for Littles if you want to see more about that. And then um, these other options are related to what your district has turned on, so I'm not going to go into there. They can submit something to you from their Google Drive or their Office 365 account that they started. It was not a template you sent out, and so just know they can also connect to their own and you know send you any document they need to. But when they're ready, I'm just going to go back to this one. When they're ready, they would submit that. And then you would be able to see that, oh, you get a celebration. <laughs> You'd be able to see that in the, uh, in the speed grader, which we're going to talk about on my next video. Hey, guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them. But if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that and all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.